Hello everyone, and welcome to my manga type setting tutorial for Dudes with Guitars. I'm Tony Tony Chop Chop, and today we are going to be typesetting a page from One Piece Chapter 642 to get you guys um, be being able to typeset basic stuff in GIMP. Uh, because I think that if someone wants to be a typesetter, usually a video can kind of help you out a bit, and um, that's kind of what I'm going to be trying to do with this video. I'm just going to get you started with the basics of how to do the very minimum with typesetting. So um, I would not recommend going just off this video. If you want to learn more about typesetting, I'll have some links in the description. So uh, look there if you would like more material for typesetting. But anyway, let's get started. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to start with this first bubble here. And uh, I have my translation right here. And he is saying the Straw Hat Pirate. So we're gonna just copy that right now. There we go. And uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put a square box over our bubble. As you can see, I have the text tool uh, highlighted uh, because that's the tool that you're going to be using pretty much most of the time when you're typesetting. Um, so after you've highlighted the general area of the bubble, it doesn't need to be exact, then just copy your text into the text editor and voila, you have text. But obviously it still doesn't look right. So we're going to be doing some stuff to fix it. So uh, the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to go to our tool options. Usually this will be connected to this part here, but um, mine got disconnected for some reason. It's not a big deal. It doesn't need to be connected, but um, if that's how it is, then whatever. So we're going to switch to wild words. Uh, your main font generally should change depending on the manga. So, for example, if you're doing a more mature manga, then um, you're not going to want to be using, like, cartoony Wild Word fonts. Uh, just because it doesn't fit the tone right. But since we're doing One Piece, Wild Words is generally considered a good font choice to use. And uh, so that's what we're going to use. So, then we're going to use the Justify tool to center it, like you would do in uh, Microsoft Word, as an example. And now we're going to format the text. Now, there's a couple ways you can do this. You can manually scrunch it up like this, but I find the best way to do it is to just do it yourself. So we're going to want to have V on top, and um, that looks about good actually. That's the shape we're going to want to go for. Then we're going to have to manually move the text box until it's in the position that we want it to be. Um, as you can see, the box is kind of in the way, but uh, what we can do is after we've done another text bubble, we can actually see this without the box in front of it. So we're just going to quickly do the next line here, which is uh, Jean May, but that's not how his name is supposed to be spelled anymore. Uh, this is kind of an older translation, so uh, it's not a big deal, so we're just going to write Jean May, and then do an ellipses and some exclamation points. Uh, this one won't need to be formatted because it's only one line, so we can just kind of put it in a general area where we think the center is, which is about there. And now we can go look up at this one, and uh, we can see it actually looks pretty good. Um, yeah, I'd say this doesn't really need to be adjusted. As you can see, there's a good amount of space on the right and left and the top and bottom. It's centered, it looks pretty good, and the text is formatted well. Now, there are ways that um, this wouldn't be formatted well, so for example, going back to this line here, if, say, we didn't do any formatting to it, so let's, uh, hold on, okay, we're putting this line back, so now it's, uh, the way it used to. If we try manually scrunching it up, it might look like this, and, uh, that doesn't look as good as the way we had it, we're gonna go here. So even though it is centered, it just doesn't look very neat. It's a much better the way we had it before, where it was, uh, like this. And then we move this a bit farther there. And yeah, that looks a lot neater. So you really, the thing is with typesetting, you have to kind of keep your eyes open and be creative in how you format text boxes. So um, that's the most important thing you can do. This line also looks to be uh, well formatted. So we're not going to change that either. Uh, and now I'm going to move on to, excuse me. We're going to move on to the next thing that we're doing, which is um, formatting uh, sound effects. So if your group is translating sound effects, which our, our group does, some stuffs, then um, you're going to want to uh, know how to be able to format this. Now I specifically chose this page because as you can see, the panel below it is kind of slanting a bit. 
So uh, say we're just going to do the translation, we're going to go SFX, and that sound effect is yelling, it's just going to be like, wah. And uh, we'll lower that down to uh, 10 point. You can see we can put it under the sound effect, but it looks odd. It's, you can see there's the empty space there, it doesn't look that good. So we're actually going to be making it so that it does look good. Uh, what you're going to want to do is, is look for about the middle area of the text, put it around here, that's good. Then we're going to switch to this tool here, the rotate tool, and we are going to rotate it slightly. Uh, you can look at the box where it's rotating, that should be about good. And uh, we're going to check that out, and now it looks a bit better, it's not perfect, it should be a bit lower down, but uh, generally that's how you're going to want to do it. Now the thing is, after you've rotated text, you can't edit it, so um, you're going to want to edit your text before you rotate it. And um, if you have to edit it again, you're going to undo your rotate, so it's just good to get that right the first time. Um, but that's basically all you have to do with that, and uh, there's also another yelling sound effect here where you would do the same thing with rotating it. Um, now another thing I want to briefly touch on is font size. Now, as you can see, for this line, the Straw Hat Pirates, uh, we are using... Uh, oh wait, hold on. There we go. We're using 18-point font, which is fine for this page, because as you can see, there's a good amount of bubble space, and uh, it looks, generally, it looks pretty good. Now, uh, the thing is, for some pages, you're going to have, and also certain manga, you're going to have pages that have smaller bubbles that won't be able to fit 18-point font. Uh, so, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to lower it a bit, Generally, for One Piece, um, I use about 15 point, uh, this page being an exception. Uh, so, you gotta really judge for yourself if you think the font size is too big. You're generally going to want to use one size the entire page, except when there is yelling. So, like, if you have a spiky yelling bubble, then you're going to want to use a different size font that makes it a bit bigger so that it kind of captures that the person is yelling. Because if it's smaller, then, you know, it's just going to be like, uh, it's not going to have the same impact that it would otherwise. Uh. So, uh, that's basically all I have to cover for this tutorial. Um, in the next video, which should be released in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be doing a video about font choices and uh, when to use certain fonts and all that good stuff. And um, a couple other tips that maybe I didn't cover in this video that I'd like to cover. So, I thank you all for watching, and... Um, subscribe to this channel if you want more manga tutorials from myself and Dudes with Guitars, and see you guys next time. Bye.